Icon, activist, feminist, fighter. We say, can I close your eyes and your ears to us any longer? Dolores Huerta is a living legend, one of the most influential civil rights leaders of the 20th century. Her activism has spanned more than six decades. And now, at 91 years old, she's still speaking out. You know, the people still today are suffering because of, of, of racial injustice. And fighting back. This is how we keep our democracy alive. Hello, I'm Dolores Huerta. I am the founder and president of the Dolores Huerta Foundation, co-founder of the United Farm Workers with Cesar Chavez, and I am a Chicana activist and a citizen of the United States of America. I was born in New Mexico, and my mother would say to us, even when we were children, you know, if you see someone that needs help, uh, you have to help them, even though I had this great job of being a teacher. It was teaching the children of farm workers that Huerta says opened her eyes to their struggle. And I went, got, went to this home where there was a family that had, uh, they had no linoleum on the floor, it was a dirt floor. Their furniture were cardboard boxes and orange crates, and the children uh, we're malnutrition. I thought, we, you know, we've got to change this, and this is the way that we change it. We get the farm workers to fight for themselves. To this day, it's what Dolores Huerta is most famous for, an outspoken organizer who became lead negotiator of the United Farm Workers Union, right hand to the civil rights leader Cesar Chavez, a woman of color in a man's world making history. When you look back, you, do you ever feel like you were in the shadows of Cesar Chavez as a Hispanic woman? I always saw myself as a feminist, but I do agree that I think as women, uh, we probably need to uh, not stand back, but stand up and not be hesitant about uh, getting in front of the cameras and, and be spokesperson for, uh, and taking credit for the work that we do. Perhaps her most famous fight, the Delano Grape Strike, when she and Cesar Chavez led a boycott against California grape growers to expose the poverty wages and poor working conditions for California farm workers. Myself and Cesar Chavez and his wife Helen Chavez, we started the Farm Workers Union. Farm workers uh, who are doing the most essential work of feeding everybody they were so discriminated in the fields that they were not even uh, provided bathrooms in the fields. And can, you can imagine what that was like for women, not given rest periods, not given uh, water, cold water to drink while they were out there working in the hot sun. And, uh, and we see that still happening today. The strike lasted five years and ended with a contract for higher pay and benefits. It was during those years that Huerta coined a phrase that would take on a life of its own. See. A rallying cry that still fuels grassroots movements around the world. Huerta says since then, some things have changed. We have made some progress in, uh, in California, Hawaii, and uh, New York. We do have unemployment insurance for the farm workers. They have a good workers' comp law. If they uh, get injured on the job, that their injuries are paid for. These are the only three states in the United States that have these protections for farm workers. I think Washington State is probably doing better. I don't think that they have... No, give farm workers the right to organize into a union, though. As you know, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Do you feel like a lot of Americans that are not of Hispanic or Latino origin truly know the contributions that Hispanics and Latinos have made to this country? No, they don't, and they don't know the history either. They learn about the genocide that happened here, the hundreds of people, Mexicans, that were lynched and that were murdered to take away their lands. Same thing happening in Texas. and. Uh, where you know, Native Americans and Mexicans were just slaughtered uh, to take away their land. People need to know this history. This is not racial history. This is American history. She says it's not just history. It's happening today, even to her. I tried to give uh, some food to a homeless uh, woman recently, and she yelled at me, you wet back, go back where you came from. This is constant, constant, constant. You never know where it's going to come from. Just so ingrained, the racism in our society is so ingrained. You know, we just have to put up with it every single day. But the thing is that I do believe that we can change. But I've said before, it has to be through education. An optimism fueled by the work of her nonprofit, the Dolores Huerta Foundation. 
Her daughter, Camila Chavez, is the executive director. Training everyday people how to be the change that they want to see in their communities. And they're about to expand. A $15 million grant will help open the Dolores Huerta Peace and Justice Foundation in Bakersfield, California. This is going to be an organizing hub, a gathering place uh, for folk activists, for community members. A training ground, perhaps, for the Dolores Huerta of the next generation. Dolores, what do you feel like your legacy is? Well, hopefully it is one of organizing and, uh, you know, getting people to become activists uh, because I think everybody needs to be an activist.